Today we're going to go through the steps on servicing a disc brake system. We're going to start by making sure it's clean. If you have any brake dust or debris on your brakes, you want to get that cleaned off either using brake cleaner or a soapy solution that would get all the dust off. Uh, once the brake system is clean, then the next thing we're going to do is start by taking off the caliper. So we need to take off the caliper slide pins. There's two of them. There's a top pin and a bottom pin. Set the ratchet to off. And you'll notice the pin spinning in this case, so we need to put a wrench on it. And that'll hold it so it doesn't spin. I'm going to just loosen that one, and now I'm going to loosen the top one. Now I can take the bottom one all the way out. And then take the top one all the way out. Now, once we take off the top caliper slide pin bolts, the whole caliper is free to come loose. So we want to be able to support it so that it's not hanging by the hose. Something else I want to point out is that this car was not done properly the last time it was serviced because if you look at the brake hose right here, it's actually got a little curly Q twist in it. It should be a nice gentle bend. This one's actually got a sharp twist in it, so that's a problem. And that's one more reason we're gonna service this brake system. So we'll take our little hanger here and we'll hang it up by the upper control arm. And now our caliper should come off. We're going to get rid of that twist that was in there by spinning it once. And now I'm going to hang it so that it's not hanging by that brake hose. Now I'm able to access both of my brake pads. Snap the outside pad out. and then snap the inside pad out. There it goes. And now I'm able to take off my caliper support bracket. These bolts tighten to a pretty high amount, so I'm going to use a breaker bar to crack them loose first. Loosen the bottom one. And now loosen the top one. Take off the bottom bolt. And then the top one. Make sure you hold on to this because it will fall once you take that top bolt out. Some cars have the disc secured with either a little circle clip that has to be removed or it has this little set screw on it or screw that needs to be removed. In this case, we have a little screw that we're going to need to take out. Now you do not want to use a typical screwdriver to do that. What you want to use is a tool like this, a little impact driver, screwdriver, and a hammer. So place that on there, give it a gentle tap with the hammer, and now the screw is going to start coming out. When you hit this, it actually pushes in and twists at the same time, which makes removing these a lot easier. And now my brake rotor will come off.
If the brake rotor does not come off, what you can do is use a big hammer and tap the rotor, but you always want to put one lug nut on just so the rotor doesn't fly off and hit the floor. Now that my brake rotor is removed, I need to do a little prep on my hub here and get that prepared for what would be the new brake rotor. Typically the hub is going to be really rusty and is going to need to be polished up a little bit so that you don't have brake rotor run out. The way you clean the hubs is with an air tool and a little abrasive disc. So this tool is going to go around each of the studs and polish it and leave it nice and clean so that there's no rust remaining. Place it on there, pull the trigger. And then we're going to take our abrasive disc and go and clean in between all of these studs. The secret to doing a good brake job is to get everything nice and clean and smooth. All right, now our hub is prepped and ready for the new brake rotor to go on there. Next thing we gotta do is we're gonna push in our piston. As the brakes wear, as the brake pads wear, this piston works its way further and further and further out, so we need to push that back in to make room for our new pistons. The correct way to do that is to take an old brake pad and then this tool which pushes the piston back in. Now you want to get this tool centered up on the piston so it pushes it in nice and evenly. And if everything is working correctly, it should be very easy to twist and push the piston back in. If you have to force this to turn, then the piston has become stuck inside of the caliper here and it's time to get a new caliper. So it should twist in very easily. Now once it's all the way in, just turn the knob the other way and you can remove the tool and the old brake pad. And now the caliper is ready for the new set of pads. We're going to take a spin around here and go over the table to get some things prepped. Now typically you would be replacing it, the brakes with a new brake rotor and buying new brake pads. For the sake of this demonstration, we're going to be reusing the old stuff, just like we would be doing in our lab in class. So on our caliper support bracket, we're going to take out the slide pins. And the rubber part should stay attached to the support bracket. So there's one. And there's the second one. We're going to take a paper towel and a little bit of our trusty brake cleaner. And then you're going to clean up the pins. All the old grease should come off. The abutment clips should also come off. And now you can go ahead and clean up where the pads would contact the caliper support bracket. Clean up the bracket. If there's any rust where the pads contact it, you're going to take a wire brush and then go in there and scrub off any rust that might be in the way. 
flip it over to the other side. And those are nice, clean, smooth metal. Your abutment clip should also get cleaned up. Remove any old grease. If you see any wear marks on them, these should get replaced. And then these will snap back in. Now we're going to take brake grease, and you always want to use grease that is intended to be used on brake systems, otherwise it might melt and wear away way sooner than it should. You're going to use just a small size dab, and then wipe that on your slide pins. You don't need a lot of grease. And then up where the little boot seals around the pin, make sure there's some grease on that too and then put that back in place. And you should see the rubber piece pop back on. That's how you know it's securely attached. When I try to remove this, the rubber piece wants to stay with it. Another small pea-sized dab, and coat this slide pin. And then we're also going to put a little bit of grease on our abutment clips. Now we're ready to start putting this back together. Now normally you'd be using a new brake rotor, but since we're doing this as practiced as one of our labs, we're going to use the old brake rotor. What I need to do is make sure I line up the hole with the fastener hole in the rotor. and then always put one lug nut back on so you don't drop a rotor on your foot. We're going to take our little impact driver and tighten the screw back down that holds the rotor in place on the hub. Once it's in place, give it a light tap with the hammer and that's gonna lightly set it in. Now we're ready to install our caliper support bracket. We're gonna take our big bolts and twist them in by hand. Now just move the caliper bracket up and down and the bolt will align with the hole. And now that's in place. We want to use our torque wrench to torque those to the proper amount. And it's easiest to do it now before the caliper gets in the way. I'm gonna use our digital torque wrench and we're gonna set it to 80 foot pounds. Which is what the manufacturer states this should be tightened to. When you're using the torque wrench, you always wanna hold it by the handle. and now those are properly tightened. At this point, we can now install our brake pads. Typically, you'd be installing a new brake pad, 
But since we're doing this for practice, we're going to use the old ones. It's easiest to kind of push up and then snap the bottom in. And there's one. And there's two. What you do want to pay attention to is make sure you don't put them on backwards, where the backing plate would be hitting the rotor. It's a common mistake. Also, if there's any shims or clips, make sure those are on there. Now we're ready to install our caliper. Because we pushed the piston in, now we have lots of room to slide it over what would be our new brake pads. We're going to take one of our slide pin bolts, put that in. I like to start with the top one and tighten that up. Grab the second bolt, put that in the bottom one, and just move the caliper up and down until they line up. And it's typical to have to wiggle them a little bit to get everything to move right. Now before I go any further, I want to check my brake hose and make sure that I don't have any twists or kinks in it like we did before. This time around, you can see I have a nice straight routing down to where it connects to the caliper. Also you can follow the lines, that's why they put these lines on the brake hoses. You want to make sure there's no twists, no kinks in those lines that are on the surface of it. So in this case we did it correctly. Now we need to torque these bolts. These go to 37 foot-pounds. And with this style, we need to put a wrench on here to keep my slide pin from spinning. And you can hear a beep and buzz. So that one's tightened correctly. And now the bottom one. And now the bottom one's tightened correctly. All right, at this point we have removed and installed all the parts for our disc brake system. The last step and the most important step is going to be to go inside the car and pump the brake pedal. You're going to pump the brake pedal which is going to start moving my piston out and drawing everything tight. The brake pedal should become firm and that's when you know everything is good to go and you can start the car. But you never want to start a car or put it in drive or reverse until you've pumped the brakes and made sure you have a firm pedal. There you have it. Those are all the steps to service the disc brake system. I hope you guys take this on yourself and learn how to do this. Good luck as you do your breaks.